So the first question we read last time, can we reject the gift? What was the answer that you wrote last time? Uh, the 2566 of Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, okay. we cannot reject a gift even if it is of little value okay. or it is from a person we dislike. Okay, so we cannot reject a gift. Can you reject an invitation? No, we cannot reject an invitation. Okay. Is there any situation in which we can reject an invitation? Yeah, if it is an a non-Islamic event. Okay. For example, even if you are a male colleague invite you somewhere, you can also reject that invitation. Nothing wrong with it. So many women work in the offices, many work in the school, colleges. Any male colleague invite them, they can also reject an invitation. Next is a rabbit meat halal. Yeah, it is halal. Reference. According to Hadith 2572, rabbit meat is halal. Okay. Good. Today we will study from the book Masnabi Imam Ahmad. Hadith number 319. Read this Hadith. Brother O Awad. Abu Huraira said, whilst Omar bin al-Khattab was delivering a khutbah, a man came and sat down. Umar said, why are you coming late to Jum'ah? The man said, oh Amir al-Mu'min, as soon as I had the call, I did wudu, then I came. Umar said, only wudu? Didn't you hear the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, when one of you goes to Jum'ah, let him do ghusl. So here we need to write the question. What we need to do before Juma. What we need to do before Juma? In the answer, you will write. We need to do ghusl, bracket, Islamic bath before Juma. Reference, Hadith 319 of Masnade Imam Ahmad. I will repeat the answer. We need to perform Wustal bracket Islamic bath before Juma. Reference Hadith three one nine of Masnad Imam Ahmad. Verda Abad. Aisha Bibi. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. What is the question here? That what we need to do before Jamal? An answer. 
we uh, need to perform wuzu uh, uh, and ghusl uh, before uh, Juma Masfaq and uh, uh, recite uh, Surah Al Kahf and wear a clean and uh, nice clothes and uh, to uh, put some perfume on your clothes. These are the sunnahs. What uh, answer did we study in this hadith? So I have just joined uh, the stars. Okay. There was some. Do you have a notebook? Like yes, I have a notebook. Okay. Next to the. <laughs> Ms. Farah. Wa alaikum. We need to we need to do ghusl uh, Muslim bath before Juma. What is the reference? Yes, uh, pardon. The reference of your answer. Uh, that's I'm not sure to say that's true. In the reference, right? Hadith three one nine. Get the right. Of Masjid Imam Ahmed. Okay, shukran jazakallah. Wa yakum. Now read the hadith. So, Farah, read this verse. Oh, it was narrated from Imran bin Hatam according to what Hab, Hab think who asked Ibn Abbas about sink garments. He said, ask Aisha about that. So he asked Aisha and she said, ask Abu Umar. So he went, ask Abu Umar and he said, Abu Haf told me that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever wears silk in this world will have no share of it in the hereafter. So question here we have is, can men wear silk clothes? Can men wear silk cloth? According to this, he to one of but men cannot wear silk clothes. I will repeat the answer. Actually, today uh, some construction work is going on in my house, so there is a lot of noise. Like sorry for that. So, I repeat the answer according to Hadith 3 to 1 of Muslim name Muhammad. Men cannot wear silk clothes. Muslim Muhammad. Repeat the question and answer. Ummu Hefa. Wardawad I should be Yes sir. Repeat the question and answer. Can men wear silk clothes? So the answer is no, because according to this Hadith 321, Prophet Muhammad said that whoever 
viewers um stay thought uh they have no share in the world after hereafter so that means that all men can't wear silk thought now read the next page it was narrated from humaid ibn abudur rahman al himyari that ibn abbas said in bashra i was the first one to come to umar when was he when he was stabbed he said learn from the me three things for i fear that pe the people will not come to me before i die as for me i did not pass any judgment regarding halala and i did not appoint any successor to be in charge of the people after me and every slave of his umars will be free the people said to me appoint a successor he said what i do it was done by someone better than me if i leave the people to decide that their affairs the prophet of allah did that and if i appoint someone who is better than me did that namely abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu i said to him receive the glad tidings of paradise you you come accompanied in uh, accompanied the messenger sir sorry it's moving so fast of allah your companionship with him was long you were appointed in charge of the believers and you showed strength and fulfillment and fulfilled the trust he said as for long he said uh, as for your glad tidings to me of paradise upon another narrator said no by allah besides whom there is no god if i had the entire world and all that in it i would give it as a ransom from the terror of what lies before me even before knowing the outcome as for what you say about me being in charge of believers affairs of by allah i wish that i could get out of it without gaining or losing anything as for what you said about the accompanying the prophet of allah that is true so this hadith is about the time when the yeah. khalifa umar radhiyallahu was stabbed and people realized that he will not survive this attack he said these things at the time before him that so first three things are we say personal then no need to write any question for that then we the important thing for us is that we all know how great personality he was in islam but still he was afraid of the next life so if such a great person who was given the glad tidings of paradise by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if he is afraid of the next life then we must be afraid of the our next life as well so we when you do something good just forget it just remember your sins and fear allah how will you answer your sins in front of allah if any board has any question they can ask me then we will proceed to the next hadith i need to write any question from this hadith it was narrated that abu umama bin sahal said umar wrote to abu ubaida bin al jarra saying teach your children swimming and teach your fighters archery 
After that, they used to practice archery frequently. Then a stray arrow came and killed a boy, and no one knew where it came from. He was under the care of his maternal uncle. Abu Ubaidah wrote to Umar about that, asking, to whom should I pay this? To whom should I pay his dear? Umar wrote back telling him that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allah and his messenger are the mawla, guardian of the one who has no mawla. And the maternal uncle is the hair of the one who has no hair. So here we have two things that we need to write. So I will write the first question here. What shall we teach our children? children so what is the, you teach many things to your children but in this hadith this hadith tells you that we should teach swimming to our children we should teach swimming to our children reference is hadith 323 of Masnad Imam Ahmad. I will repeat the answer. We should teach swimming to our children. Reference is Hadith 323. Second thing is for all those who are in who are soldiers who know who to write any person. The first question. What the old? I'm sure, baby. Read the question. So the, uh, what shall we teach our children? Uh, we should teach, according to this hadith, we should teach our children swimming and archery. Archery is only for soldiers. Here, the word is Makati Lagatako. So it means soldiers only, not your children. For children okay, only, swimming. What is what is the reference of your answer? Hadith number three twenty three. Yes, three two three. Three twenty three. Must Imam Muhammad. Who will be the heir of a person who has no heir? Who will be the heir of the person who has no heir? The answer is maternal uncle according to Hadith 323 maternal uncle is the hair of the one who has no hair i will repeat the answer 
According to Hadith 323, maternal uncle is the heir of the person who has no heir. Ummu Haifa do heir. Parha. George. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Repeat the question and answer. I am seeing this question here. Uh, I am not able to understand this. Uh, the messenger are the maula guardian of the one who has no maula, and the maternal uncle is the higher higher of the one of the one who has no higher. What does that mean? Do you know what is higher? Or here, yeah, whatever the, what, that is, like someone who will uh, uh, be in, in charge of you, right? Like somebody will take care of you if you don't have any parents or anything like that. No, no, no. When no. you die, when you wealth, die, uh, when you die, your children will you'll get your uh, wealth. So, your the, children, the children are... will get the children will get the support from the maternal uncle. No, no, no. Do you know what is higher? Hmm. Tell me what is here. I, I'm confused in this sentence here because um, higher is someone like Varis, right? Somebody is Varis. A person legally entitled yeah. to property or land. So huh. anyone who will get your wealth after your death is your heir. Yeah, okay. that is a varis, right? Yes, varis. Varis. Okay. varis. Okay. So let's suppose a person died, but he has no children. Oh, okay. No wife. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Yeah, I got it. Yes. Mr. Mr. Ahmed died and he does not have any children. Yeah. No parents, mm -hmm. no wife, nothing. He's a lone person. Right. So his maternal uncle. Maternal is mother's father, mother's brother. Yes, maternal uncle will get his wealth, his house, his car, his bank balance, his jewelry, <laughs> whatever okay. he has. After his death, maternal uncle will get everything. Mm. So okay. this is the meaning of this hadith. Yeah. MashaAllah. Okay. I got it now. <laughs> okay. So I joined you late a little bit. So I'm just going to go with the uh, the first question. Uh, what we need to do before Juma. Okay. That yes. one. And probably you all have heard the azan in the background. So from no. next class, our time will be 5 p.m. Pakistan time. Okay? okay. But it is our Fajr time, that time. 5 p.m. You are from which country? From Canada. You pray at home or in the mosque? No, no. I pray at home. Then no problem. <clears throat> you can pray before or after the class. It will be not a issue. In the mosque, we have fixed time, so you will have to go oh. at the fixed time. But in at home, you can pray whenever you want. That's yeah, but the time starting seven forty seven here, and uh, if you go uh, like today, we are doing seven o'clock. We are doing with you this class, right? Yeah. So here it is seven o'clock when when you started the class. Okay. So if you want to go back five o'clock, that will be. Yeah, we can finish it. How many hours do you take the class? Half an hour? 35 minutes usually. 45 minutes? Yeah, then we are almost close to Fajr. So that's okay. Okay, now everybody send me the pictures of your answers on WhatsApp. Yeah, I I didn't do it, but I'm just going to do it now. But if you can send me the uh, paragraphs, uh, brother, the will, paragraph. Yes, I will send the recording, inshallah. Uh, yeah, because I'm just going to write down these before Juma. And uh, the second one is uh, can men wear silk? Okay. Then what is it? And it is 
what shall we teach our children what shall we teach our children if any student has any question they can ask me then we'll stop the class why are we focusing on swimming for the children in this part this is just a command from prophet and his sahaba so uh, this is uh -huh. a command from some uh, khalifa umar so uh -huh. If you obey it, it will be good for your children. Today, science yeah. also tells us that swimming is the best exercise. Right, right. No, for but I'm, I'm wondering about the you know Islamic way, what we were supposed to teach. That's what I was wondering. So anyways, this is the, a good thing that is coming from swimming. Yes. Um, but archery is not included in it, right? No, it is not included. Yeah. What do we need to do before Juma? The preparation of the Juma, you mean? We need to perform ghusl, Islamic bath before Juma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a command of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we need to right. do it. Right. So men don't wear uh, silk, right? Yes, men yeah. cannot wear. Men are prohibited. Yeah. Yeah. Men are prohibited, yeah. What about the Juma? You are saying only the ghusl and uh, the wearing good clothes? This uh, hadith, wearing... this hadith that we study today, only makes uh, bath necessary. Oh, necessary. So this one is a kind of obligatory thing. Mm -hmm. Can you just repeat the answer for me, please? That's so that I can write it down. What we need to do before Juma Salah? Oh, you better watch the class recording because I need to go to the mosque now. I'm in kind of hurry, actually. So okay. I, I will send the recording. You can watch the answers okay. video for the details, inshallah. Okay. So the next class, Sheikh, will be at 11 o'clock yeah, in UK. Uh, which city you are? In uh, London. 5 p.m. Pakistan to London. 5 p.m. <laughs> will be 1 p.m. in London. Okay. Okay. What about Canada? It is 5 p.m., right, in Canada? Canada, which city? Toronto. Toronto. 8 a.m. 8 a.m.? We'll be late. behind, more behind? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, 8 a.m. Anyone else okay. want to check your city? So the others are doing at... Uh, UK is going to do 1 p.m. in the night. Yes. 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Okay. See, okay, you all, oh, yeah. Yeah. See you all next please time. Send me, please send the, record, the, the, the paragraph so that I can write down my answer. Inshallah. 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 Thank you.